Hi, I'm Tom Spring, and I'm here with Mike Murray from Lookout Security. Um, introduce yourself, please. Tell me, tell me uh, a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Tom. Uh, what you're up to? So, I'm Mike Murray. I'm the VP of Security Intelligence over here at Lookout. Um, our focus is entirely on mobile security, and I think. Mobile security is changing a lot right now. We're, we're seeing a lot of movement from the idea of the mobile device as a cell phone to the movement of mobile being a platform that's enabled everywhere. But, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you know what I wanted to zero in on yeah. was some of the research you're going to be talking about here at Black Hat. And um, what really interests me is a lot of the work that you've done over the past couple months on uh, mobile APTs and how we're seeing more APTs shifting. I'm going to talk a little bit about where where APTs are are shifting from and going to uh, the mobile platform and and, and uh, take it away. Absolutely. So so I think mobile is so interesting because of the way that the APTs have evolved. So if we think about the traditional original way that that APTs evolved, they evolved later in the traditional PC world. In the mobile world, because the phone is such a powerful espionage device, if you think about it, the phone literally nobody ever turns it off. They lay it on their bedside table at night. They walk into every meeting with it. It has a microphone that can record at any point, a GPS chip. It has all of this stuff that makes it the ultimate spy device. Yeah. And so the the APTs got there first, right? The the um, the nation states recognize the espionage value of the mobile device so quickly. And so we see uh, but fundamentally at this point, every significant nation state that has any sort of espionage program has a mobile espionage program. So now, so now talk a little bit about your most recent uh, mobile APT that you guys were able to write about actually at length and, and identify. It was a Absolutely. fascinating research. Well, we, we have a few. So so the team, uh, two members of my team are actually here at Black Hat presenting on a group that we call Stealth Mango. That group is out of Pakistan and we caught them doing some interesting things compromising um, users of military or users in um, military in the, in the region, India, Iraq, you know, things that are interesting to Pakistan, Afghanistan as well. Um, but we've seen we've seen others as well. One of my one of my actual favorite reports, which um, came out a few months ago, was on Dark Caracal, which was basically the Lebanese government and why why we thought that was so interesting. And and Mango is similar in that if you think about the traditional cyber APT powers, mm -hmm. you think China, Russia, you know, the Five Eyes, you don't think Lebanon and Pakistan yeah. as like these major players. But because the mobile the mobile platform is A, so effective as an espionage device, but B, so easy to compromise. So so, so, so talk about one of those talk about yeah, one well, of those incidents. Uh, yeah, I was gonna jump into the compromise piece. So one of the things that's really interesting is so first of all, mobile devices generally don't have ports open. Mm -hmm. So the way onto a mobile device almost exclusively is some sort of social engineering. And our research shows that people, given the same emails, given the same messages, people are 50% more likely to get compromised, to click on that link on a mobile device than they are on a laptop. Mm -hmm. And it's partially because all the things that you think about, on that we've taught our users over the years, hover over a link with your mouse. Yeah. Oh, look, that doesn't work. Look at the URL bar. Well, when the URL bar is suddenly only this long, mm -hmm. it's a very different, you know, all the things we taught our users about how not to get fished stop working on mobile. Mm -hmm. And so all of these folks, Mango, Caracal, the, the Pegasus folks, they have evolved into a really effective, like, cyber phishing campaign. That, and, and I hate to use the word phishing because when I say phishing, most people think email. We see most of these groups have gone outside of email. So, for example, Stealth Mango, who, who we're talking about at the show, what they were doing was almost all of their stuff was coming through Facebook. They made fake Facebook accounts. They found their targets. They sent them messages and said, hey, go to this site and install this version of this app. Dark Caracal was the same thing. They were using Facebook to deliver people to fake app stores. The, um, the Israeli group NSO, they use just straight text messages. And some of those text messages are insane. Um, we, we, uh, there was a report about uh, one of the text messages that was used against a Mexican target, and it was one of the most powerful phishing messages I've ever seen. the The message was effect, and it was in Spanish, but I'm gonna, so my translation is going to be sort of as best I can. But basically, what the message was was, you know, Doctor So and So, your daughter, insert name here, has been in an accident. This is the hospital. Click here for directions to the hospital. 
anyone with a daughter who's of age that, that yeah, that's possible yeah. clicks on that link. 100% of people so, fall for that. So what, what? where did that link take them? Did they do to, to that, a, that link uh, popped the browser to a browser zero day, which browser exploit led to an escalation of privilege and then complete compromise of the device. So I want to sort of keep things short. Yeah. Um, but I also want to put things on a little bit on fast forward. Um, these mobile APTs, where are, we, where are we seeing these mobile APTs going and are the sort of the, you know, the more everyday plain vanilla um, uh, hackers picking up these tricks and um, using them as well? Yeah, absolutely. So so I think the one rule that I think is true across all of the security industry is that exploitation commoditizes. What is new and fancy at Black Hat today, two years from now is a Metasploit module that everybody knows how to use, uh -huh. right? And what we're seeing is these tactics that these super high-end APTs are using. Well, so some of those same sorts of text messages that we saw the really advanced groups using, now the Lebanese are using. And the Lebanese are, are very unsophisticated. Some of that malware is, is not particularly sophisticated, but because they're learning, now everybody's taking these tricks. And these, I mean, some of these attacks are getting so pervasive. I mean, when we, when we were looking at the Lebanese group, they, they had targets in 34 different countries around the world. Like, that's the kind of reach you expect yeah. the Chinese and the Russians to have, not second-rate parties, yeah. right? Yeah. So everybody's getting into this game now. Well, can I ask you, I just want to wrap it up and ask you, you know, what is the, um, what are the, the primary targets for these APTs? I mean, is it always Android? Can it be? No, Apple? no. Can it, I mean, what are, what are we seeing in you, terms of a split there? So I think it mostly depends on the region, right? If I am, if I'm targeting people in India, for example, mm -hmm. India is a very huge Android market. Why would I develop iOS? If I'm targeting people in the United States, absolutely, I'm I'm on iOS as well. And so, so it's not platform limited as much as it is like the Lebanese, for example, was mostly on Android. Well, why? If you're attacking people in that region, it's a much more Android heavy place. Like it's yeah. it's. It, I always think of of cyber criminals and APTs as business people in some way. If most of your target users are on iOS, you're going to develop for iOS. If most of your target users are on Android, you'll ta you'll target Android. Well, I think that's all the time we've got, and I want to thank you so much Absolutely. for uh, talking with Threat Tom, Post. Tom, thank you. All right.